having that hold, uh, they will, um, at T minus three, they will um, update it again and feed the information into the computer that's in the spacecraft, which acts as a backup for the guidance for the boost rocket itself. And uh, the Agena is uh, now uh, approaching uh, the west coast of the United States, Mexico, Baja California, and uh, it will actually be about 1,009 nautical miles ahead of the Gemini at the time of insertion. It won't be quite that far ahead at the time of liftoff, but it will be ahead of it a little bit, and number eight should be about 480 nautical miles behind it, and uh, we'll have the three things whirling around up there together, hopefully all of them uh, sufficiently synchronized so that they can carry on the remainder of this mission. They had awfully good luck with number 10, and they've had no problems in the countdown with number uh, with the spacecraft. So um, it should work out all right, but it is staggeringly complex. If it doesn't happen today, they have to postpone for two days, and then all the figures that they have are no good. They have to back up and do it another way entirely, which they have figured out in advance. And if it doesn't go that day, they got other figures, and it goes on for 16 days. So they've, they've done a lot of work getting ready for this one, David. Well, Doug, you were, you were talking about the computers. It seems to me um, the age of the computer had to arrive before the age of space, didn't it? I don't see how it could have been done otherwise. You certainly could not uh, figure all these variables with a paper and pencil, or at least not fast enough. Maybe you could fit, you might be able to figure the first set. Uh, but then if you didn't meet those conditions exactly, I guess you would just have to cancel the whole idea until you could sit down with a box of pencils and a bundle of pads and figure out the new conditions. Mm -hmm. You'd have to pick a time sufficiently far ahead so that you'd allow yourself time to compute it. To do the figuring. The hold is coming up in about 30 seconds now. And this again is uh, planned. Uh, this is uh, to allow them to take care of any last minute problems that might have occurred, none have so far, and also to let them lift off at the exact moment that they have in mind, which uh, Jack King told us a while ago had finally been computed at 20 minutes and 23 seconds after the hour. 20 minutes and 23 seconds exactly for ignition. Here's King. This is Gemini Launch Control. We're at T-minus three minutes and holding. T-minus three. Just as this announcement came up, the hold was declared. This is the planned built-in hold. The duration is about five minutes and 35 seconds. We will then resume our countdown at T-minus three minutes, aiming for ignition of the launch vehicle at 20 minutes and 23 seconds after the hour. We have a window, a period in which we can launch in about 37 seconds. This is the launch plan at the present time. Uh, following resumption of the count, uh, some very important information will be going to the launch vehicle and spacecraft. These are the update flight parameters. The launch vehicle guidance system, of course, is the primary system that directs the vehicle during the powered phase of flight. We send a signal by hard line here at the Cape to the launch vehicle to put in the proper parameters. By radio signal, we send flight parameters also to the Gemini spacecraft computer, which acts as a backup guidance system in the event the primary system fails during flight. If, as on the Gemini 9 mission, the spacecraft computer does not receive the update signal at the T-minus three-minute mark, we will continue with our countdown because the computer has information that was stored aboard at T-minus 15 minutes in the count. If the spacecraft computer does accept the information, we will make a check to ensure that this information is correct as we continue down the final three minutes of the count. We're holding at T-minus three minutes. This is Gemini Launch Control. David? In about, yes, Frank. I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say a rather obvious thing, that in about four minutes they will resume the count at three minutes, count down three minutes, and then the rocket will take off. Uh, That's all. I don't really have anything to say. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was kind of interesting, I thought. Um, it was kind of interesting, I thought, that uh, after that time when they had difficulty getting that uh, last load of information into the, the spacecraft computer and scrubbed, did not go that day, they decided later that they could have gone without, uh, without that having gotten in because information was in there already and it was only about 12 minutes old. 
well, why didn't they know then that they could have gone ahead? It's just a simple human reaction when they have to make a decision that fast, with that little time and with that much riding on it, they decided the safest thing to do would be to scrub. Later, they decided, well, they could have gone ahead with it, but it's a perfectly human reaction. That's all I wanted to say. Well, I guess nobody would want to make a decision like that if he were not absolutely certain, and then if, then if something went wrong, uh, I know I surely wouldn't. Two days later, everybody would be pointing his finger at him and saying it was your blunder. Gemini 10 countdown in progress leading toward liftoff at 4.20 p.m. Central Standard Time, July 18, 1966. T-minus two minutes and 22 seconds and counting. Both the launch vehicle with the primary guidance system and the spacecraft computer with the uh, secondary or backup system both have received the proper update information shortly after we resume the countdown. No, no. All systems are still looking good at this time as we come up on the two-minute mark. This is Gemini Launch Control, T minus one minute and 50 seconds. We now have confirmation here in the control center that the updates received by the launch vehicle and spacecraft are correct. We are in a go condition at this point in the countdown. During the final moments of the count, uh, the vehicle will go on internal power on its two batteries in the launch vehicle at one minute and 30 seconds, right at this point, T minus 90 seconds and counting. From 10 seconds from now, the engines will be gimbaled. Once again, as a final check, the launch vehicle test conductor will alert the astronauts that this event will take place because they can actually feel it in the spacecraft itself. Now, one minute and 11 seconds and counting. Of the work in the blockhouse at this point is all monitoring the various consoles. We are in a completely automatic sequence now, T minus 60 seconds and counting. T minus 50. Minus 40 seconds and counting. During these final moments of the count, the pre valves in the launch vehicle will open to permit the fuel and the oxidizer to come down toward the chamber of the vehicle. 30 seconds and counting. T minus 20. Quick check on the blockhouse. All systems looking good. T minus 15. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. Ignition as we go. Mike Collins reports the pitch program has started. seconds, 40 miles in altitude, surgeon reports the crew looks fine to them, one minute, 45 seconds, we're 120 miles downrange, the crew reports an update has been received in the spacecraft. Four 
four seconds. And the crew has been given a go for staging. And 10 is go for staging, Young reports. Two minutes, 20 seconds. Crew reports they've received another update. And we've got second, first stage cut off. Flight Dynamics confirmed staging. And second stage thrust looks good. His guidance displays look good on board, and they look good here in this control center. Three minutes, 12 seconds into the flight. We're 120 miles down range, approximately 60 miles altitude. Three minutes, 30 seconds. minutes 44 seconds into the flight the altitude now about 70 miles guidance is both guidance systems are exactly what they ought to be mark four minutes final status check being taken now by the flight director Glenn Lunny he gets a go from every station and tells Gordon Cooper to give 10 a go and ten, uh, Young reports he is also go. Four minutes, 24 seconds into the flight. Four minutes, 44 seconds into the flight. A velocity reading 17,000 feet per second. Altitude a little more than 80 miles. We're about 320 miles downrange. Cooper says everything still looks good here. The next thing is for the second stage to cut off and I've been at 16 seconds into the flight and we've achieved 80% of the desired velocity. We're now reading a little more than 21,400 feet per second. Cooper checks with Young to be sure they receive that .8 mark and Young says we got it little conversation coming back from the crew. Good seco. There it is. Five minutes, 46 seconds. That was almost on the dot. On range, 87. Lonnie says your go all the way to proceed with the IVAR routine, the insertion velocity authority routine. the crew of the spacecraft is firing its thrusters and Young says we look good they're leaving the second stage they should be in orbit Mike now Collins now uh, reading some numbers out of his computer uh, on board Solutions compare very favorably with the ground situation here, calling for a 26, 25 feet per second forward burn, and that is what Young is executing. Six minutes, 53 seconds.